Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making some masked flowers um, in our art journal page. So masking is something I really like to do. It's a really good technique to do over a page that you have absolutely no idea what you're doing with, which is what this page is. You can see it's a bit of a use it up page. Everything kind of got dumped in here. Um, that blue that was in the background was a little bit dark so I wanted to kind of hide it away and when I started this process I really didn't know where I was going I knew I would probably be doing some sort of mic making or stenciling in the background because that background needed something to kind of pull it all together because <laughs> it's a bit all over the place so I've um, chucked this stencil over the top I'm not cleaning my sponge in between I don't mind that the colors are mixing I just wanted something in the background so um, I had a bit of an idea that flowers might be good and hence why I chose this sort of flowery stencil. This is another um, mark making stencil from Natalie May uh, and um, when you're not in the mood to think about making marks, having a mark making stencil is really really happy because it's already, the decision is already made for, it, for you, you just need to put some paint through it so um, that's really handy. I'm trying to balance up the colours a little bit. Um, a bit hard when you've got all sorts of colours in the background but that top corner was quite dark so I am trying to lighten it somewhat. I don't mind having darks on my page, it really doesn't bother me but that was a little bit just too in your face so um, I wanted something to sort of calm it down a little bit. I'm not sure if this worked but you know, each to their own. It's late at night and I'm just chucking paint down on my page. <laughs> so once I've done this I am then going in with a little bit of white. Again, just to add a little bit of white space onto the page. So this is where I would usually get break out my paint pens, the big thick pink paint pens and chuck them on. Um, but I had the stencil out, so why not just use the stencil to do it? Um, it really doesn't matter, it's all random and I just stencil until I finish the paint on my, my board. I do make sure that it is dry before I put on my next coat though, so that's quite important. If you're impatient like me, you can use your heat gun, um, otherwise most sensible people would just leave it to uh, dry. So now I am trying to find the stamps I wanted to use and I apologise right now because I seem to have caused quite a bit of grief with this stamp in the past because um, it's and in my, you'll notice in my intro, it's a stamp I've used there and people love it. It's um, Art by Mylene stamp. It is out, it's discontinued. I'm sorry, I've asked. It's not coming back. <laughs> um, so it's just a really nice mic making one. I think she's made similar ones that are smaller. Um, Vicky Booten did not as big as this one, but a bigger version of something similar. Obviously it's not the same, but it had patterns in it and so on. So there are similar stamps out there that you could use. I just stamped my stamp out onto a piece of paper and cut it out and I'm using that as a mask. So you can see I'm popping it down so I can overlap my stamping. And I'm creating a bunch of flowers basically. Um, I'm stamping straight into my book as well. Um, it ended up stamping okay. It wasn't brilliant in some places, but I knew I was going to sort of draw, use paint, pen and stuff over the top. So um, it wasn't too much of an issue. Now I'm just going in though and painting out my background. So I'm using a watered down night paint um, or a dark blue paint. And you can see, particularly in the close up, and where I'm obviously from where I'm working, I can still see some of the mic making in the background. It's just obviously got that glaze of blue over the top. By doing that, you put the focus back on the flowers again, which is what I wanted. And by having the flowers in the background um, with the mic making over it, um, that adds the colour. So you've got this instant colour underneath. So it's a, as I said, it's a really good way of a page that you don't really like um, hiding hiding the evidence so to speak. So now I'm just going in with some paint pens and I'm adding in some of those details. So obviously I am just following what's on the stamped image. Where it's got dots I'm putting in some white dots, where it's got lines I'm putting in some white lines just to add some highlights and some detail onto the stamped image. So it's a really really simple way to add something to your page. Um, and you can add as much or as little and I'm doing it all in white you could obviously do it in different colors so 
Um, for example, I could use some turquoises or pinks, pick up some of those colours from the background and make them really, really bright. <clears throat> but if you're unsure, white's always a great choice because it'll work with any colour underneath. You don't need to think about it too much and it is a, a very brightening colour, obviously, to put on your pages. So you can see I am working around and just continuing to add where I need to. Now, <laughs> again, I know from the previous video I did using this stamp, that um, I missed some spots and it really bugged people that I missed spots. It's just because I'm working on things, it, like I jump from flower to flower and sometimes I forget to um, do all the bits and pieces that I've done in other flowers. So it is genuinely, I just pass by and don't realize I've done it. Now I'm just going in with, again, a really fine white pen with my hand held quite far up the barrel so it's a really loose grip and I'm doing really scribbly lines roughly over where the black lines are. I'm not hitting the black lines completely, they're just roughly in the right place to give this really sketchy look and I've got a cat coming to visit and paint, drink my paint water again which is just lovely. Um, and there he goes. <laughs> so once I've finished doing that I'm then um, trying to draw in where stems could possibly go on the page um, and a few leaves just to again balance up the page a little bit. Um, I've never been great at drawing flowers I have to say and I've definitely never been good at um, drawing bunches of flowers but it was a reasonable attempt I think of um, at what I was trying to do so um, I know there are amazing people out there who do bunches of flowers like this all the time um, so I would highly suggest you go and have a look at their, their channels as well. One of the things that um, as I was doing this was bugging me a little bit is um, obviously in a bunch of flowers you have got varying sizes. These are all the same size. It would have looked better if some of those outside flowers were slightly smaller to get that sense of perspective somewhat in the real world. In my stamp, in my journal where I'm trying to cover an ugly page, it really doesn't matter too much. But if you're looking at it going, it doesn't quite look right. I think that's the reason why. It needs a variety of sizes in there somewhat. You can see with the paint pen down the bottom, I'm just mixing colours. I'm going in and putting a little bit of that white in again just to show which stems are overlapped and underlapped. Uh, foreground and background is a better way to put it. And putting in a little bit of detail. <clears throat> excuse me um, obviously you can use paint for that it's just I was up I had paint pens in front of me and I was feeling lazy and I didn't want to get paint out so <laughs> um, sometimes there's just days like that where you you go for the easiest option so again you can still see um, the line work is fairly loose on all of this it's not very tight um, and it's just to add that little bit of detail I did break out my gold um, chrome pen to add a little bit of shine and a little bit of extra colour onto the page too, which is hard to see um, from this angle, but when you tip it up in the light, it is really shiny and really gold. So it looks like almost like liquid metal on it, which is an awesome effect to put over your work as well. So once I fiddled around with that, I was tying up with, do I put a quote on it? As I was thinking about that, I did want to lighten the background just a little. So I've got my white acrylic ink that I have sprinkled over the background and all over my iPad and everywhere else on my desk. You can see me wiping off my iPad there. Um, if you do get acrylic ink or acrylic paint on things, wipe it off straight away. Um, it does set permanent. However, um, hand sanitizer or alcohol spray is really, really good at removing stuff. So. Um, particularly on glass it comes off fairly easily so you haven't ruined anything but the other thing is you could just not do it with your iPad sitting in front of it you know but, uh, they, <laughs> these, these are just handy hints for more sensible people that are not me um, I did decide in the end to put a quote on but I didn't write it on because I couldn't work out how I would do that so I just used again a night by Marlene sticker book we've got some amazing um, quotes in it so I like this one stay wild flower child fearless and free I thought it worked well with a bunch of flowers so I hope you have a go at doing this great way as I said to rescue a page that is a bit um, not to your liking and until next time bye for now